handle went away. The other engines were kept so busy that they didn't have time to miss it. Hedge cutters had been busy too, trimming trees and bushes beside the railway so that passengers could see the view. Each evening, Rusty took some trucks up the line and carried away as many cuttings as he could. But he could manage only a few at a time, and as fast as he moved the cuttings, more took their place. It was Peter Sam's turn to take the morning train. The coaches were full, but the rails were dry, and Peter Sam didn't mind the extra load. He puffed happily along until, just beyond the tunnel, he found that, in the night, a high wind had blown hedge cuttings across the rails. He stopped as his driver and fireman got down. We'll never get through that lot, exclaimed the fireman. Pooh, scoffed Peter Sam. They're only little branches, nothing to it. We'll simply push them aside. Have it your own way, said his driver. If we stop to clear up properly, we shall be here for ages, and some of the passengers might miss their train at the bottom station. Peter Sam puffed bravely on. He went carefully at first, and the branches slid aside easily. Then came a stretch where the cuttings were brambles. Peter Sam began to regret his boasting. Not only were the thorns prickly, but they caught in each other and the branches stayed firmly put. Ouch! exclaimed Peter Sam suddenly and stopped. I can't move, he complained. The fireman looked. It's no good, he said at last. You've got brambles caught in your valve gear and steam can't get into your cylinders. We shall have to cut you out. Peter Sam shuddered. He shut his eyes and prepared for the worst. The fireman pulled on thick gloves. Then, while he tried to clear what he could, the driver went to ask the guard if he had a knife. Some of the passengers had knives too and came to help. But even then, the job took longer than expected. And by the time Peter Sam was free, there was no hope of getting the passengers round the lake and back before James's train left. Peter Sam's driver apologised to the passengers, but they said they didn't mind. We enjoyed the adventure, they laughed. The driver telephoned the thin controller. Rusty worked hard, and by afternoon the line was clear for trains to run normally. Peter Sam's front felt uncomfortable for several days. The others laughed and teased him. Take a snow plow next time, they suggested, and they kept asking if he had a sharp knife in his cab. At last, Scar Lorry told them to stop. I really can't think what all the fuss is for, remarked Duncan innocently. They were only little branches after all. Nothing to get prickly about, surely.